Channel movie start with an enjoyable dynamic between Cassie, a liberal, and Luke, a soon to be deployed Marine and a conservative dot. However, the lines could have been written better rather than sounding like a silly argument between social media show offs. The film also began as an interesting commentary and satire about America's broken healthcare system, jingoism, and the glorification of racism in the name of patriotism. It spiraled into a threadbare. Opposites attract romantic cliché pretty soon a victim of the U.S. healthcare system and Big Pharma, Cassie found it increasingly difficult to secure life-saving insulin for herself with her meager income. Luke, on the other hand, had a past fraught with drug addiction and a dealer chasing him in the present for repayment of some loans the only solution to their problems? A marriage of convenience. That would entail Cassie having access to military spousal privileges that included full health care and would get Luke some extra money that he could use to repay his loans. Their play pretend marriage started taking a passionate and romantic turn on the night of their wedding. However, the two chose to ignore the moment of passion, and soon after, Luke was deployed to Iraq. The film could have done a better job with scenes involving Luke's base camp training and time in Iraq without spoiling much. A lot of the crucial moments between the two characters and the turning points in their story seemed rushed or left to assumption on the viewer's part, but the two-hour runtime could have been better, justified by incorporating more dramatic elements and real, vulnerable, and raw moments in any case. Luke returned from Iraq with severely injured legs after stepping on an eye their sham marriage had made Cassie an unwilling caretaker for her fake husband. But their proximity and latent feelings for each other led to bigger sparks flying between them. However, the plot tiptoed the will they won't they line until the very end, making Purple Hearts seem unnecessarily stretched amidst all this new drama and the beginnings of a new romance. The characters completely deviate from their true nature as portrayed at the beginning of the film. Cassie seemed to have suddenly become a patriot and a doting wife, both of which she loathed when the film began. Moreover, her musical career remained untouched by the theatrics in real life, making the story very hard to believe the romance should have ultimately driven Purple Hearts to success and the excess details wouldn't have mattered as much if the chemistry between Carson and Galatine had been palpable. Unfortunately, it is not. This is incredibly disappointing considering how personable both actors are in other roles, and how insanely attractive they are. Chemistry is not solely based on looks or qualities found in previous projects, but it is something that needs to be fostered or inherent. Neither is applicable in this situation. The two are. The characters are also poorly drawn, with Cassie starting out as a likable protagonist who correctly recognizes the issues which permeate the military. She manages not to be dazzled by Luke's attempt to placate her after she is sexually harassed at work a scene that is the opposite of a meet cute dot the story about Cassie trying to figure out how to exist in a country that makes her feel like a second class citizen and is killing her as it bends the knee to medical corporations is enough to sustain a movie dot it would be sad and troubling but her resolve to succeed would ultimately win audiences over dot in a way purple hearts could have been reworked to give Carson her pseudo-Christian drama film in the vein of the Vanessa Hudgens film Gimme Shelter. Carson would have been able to carry such a movie as she is a magnetic and capable actress for all its faults. Purple Hearts succeeds in one regard, with Elizabeth Allen Rosenbaum at the helm. The movie is picturesque and captures the atmosphere the film desperately attempts to set by way of the screenplay. However, Purple Hearts can skate by on presentation alone. The inability to reckon with its themes and characters undermines the whole endeavor. It is easy to see the potential in the first act, but Purple Hearts leans too much into over-sentimentality, with narrative tricks designed to trigger tears and subdue thinking overall. The plot of Purple Hearts was engaging for anyone who likes watching romantic movies. It offers a bit of an old-world charm with the military and war setup and the cliches of will-they-won't-they they romance that's always interesting for those who breathe in the genre. Dot. But the writing could have been better, and it wouldn't have hurt to have had some originality and unpredictability. This story could have been effectively told in 90 minutes or less, but it becomes a bloated bore that goes on for more than two hours. Dot. Had it been shorter, it would have allowed the flimsy critique of the military to slide and the shallow characterizations to be passable at best. Dot. However, the film's lengthier runtime should have added greater depth. Viewers have come to recognize that the military 
and all its apparent flaws, will, have an everlasting presence in Hollywood. Still, the lack of critical insight and the baseline military worship can leave a bitter taste in one's mouth. Furthermore, the film's interpretation of deployment is as hollow as the characterization of loot. The wounded warrior trope has had its place in the romance genre for quite some time, but Purple Hearts doesn't add anything new or exciting to this narrative. If anything, it is a watered-down retelling of this trope why romance that is suitable for young fans of Disney Channel starlet Sophia Carson and Nicholas Galitzine, who also has his own young fanbase two people conspire to scam the government for health insurance and extra pay. Along the way, they fall in love. The scam can't work, forever, but the reward is much greater than the risk in the end. This elevator pitch makes it easy to see how such a basic premise can work to make a swoon-worthy romantic epic or a sentimental romantic comedy. Sadly, Purple Hearts, directed by Elizabeth Allen Rosenbaum from a screenplay by Liz W. Garcia and Kyle Jarrow, cannot successfully find the balance to be one or the other Cassie Salazar, Sophia Carson, and Luke Morrow, Nicholas Galitzine, are two people who could not be more different. Cassie is a bartender who aspires to be a full-time singer-songwriter. She is a prickly, man-hating feminist, as perceived by the Marines who frequent her bar, with tons of sass and a lot to say about the U.S. government. At the same time, Luke is a delinquent turned Marine who is lacking in the critical thinking department. The two find themselves in a difficult spot in their individual lives and decide to marry, despite not liking each other. For the military benefits. Luke gets shipped off to Iraq to fight for America's misplaced freedom while Cassie continues with her singing career, which begins to take off. When tragedy strikes and the two faux lovebirds are reunited, they fall in love against the odds.